start the recording. Hey, badasses, how are you? Happy Tuesday to you. I am here with our once a month guest expert series. Did you know about this? You get to be a guest expert in this group. If you would like, we just need to chat. I'll tell you more about that at the end. But I'm here today with Cora Naylor. Naylor? Naylor? Naylor. 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 Who is, we've been, we have known each other forever. Yeah. I think. It's been a while. It's been a while. Anyways, Cora has also been a member of this group for a while as well. And let me tell you where, there it is. Cora Naylor is a co-active coach. I'm going to ask her what that means, who's found her true passion in helping women find new meaning, focus, and passion in life after their kids move out. So, ooh, empty nest. I I can't, I still can't imagine it. As a mother herself, she relates to her clients because she's been in their shoes and found a way to rise above it. When her twin boys moved out, Cora didn't feel like herself anymore and lost the passion in her life. She's since found her true purpose in life and combines what she learned in her journey professional coaching tools, and her amazing problem-solving skills to help other women redirect, rediscover themselves later in life. So welcome, Cora. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this conversation, and I see some people are in the group watching us. So if you guys are in the group, let me know who's here and post any questions you have for Cora in the group, and I will make sure that she gets asked those and, and we get those answered. But Cora, it's interesting. I want to just ask you right away, what's a co-active coach? What does that mean? Yep, that's actually the training institute that I'm through. And co-active is about the being and the doing. So the co is who you are being and the active is the action that you're taking. Oh, I love that because they aren't always connected, are they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not just like a coach for accountability and the big to-do list. It's about the whole person. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love it. So I wanted to ask you this. This jumped out when I was reading your bio just now. Um, when your sons moved out and you found yourself feeling kind of lost for a little while, before they move up, moved out, did, were you a little, like, did you, were you dreading it or were you excited for it? I mean, I was excited for them. I mean, they were 23, so they weren't super young when they moved out. And what was a little bit different for us is that we all moved out of the house at the same time. So the boys moved into their place and my husband and I moved in downsized at the exact same weekend. We all moved at the same time. So I didn't have that experience where you have the empty room in your house with no kids there. Yeah. And then my husband and I moved into a condo, which we promptly renovated. So I was doing all of that at the same time and just kind of wondering, like, what's wrong with me? Like, why do I feel so weird? I didn't even really know what was going on. So what what were you feeling? Just um, kind of empty, like like I lost my spark. I just didn't have my normal happy-go-lucky feeling that I usually have. I'm a pretty positive person, and Mm -hmm. I kept showing that on the outside, but on the inside, I didn't feel that. Because presumably at 23, you weren't driving them to classes or, uh, you know, you weren't involved as as involved as you would have been when they were younger. Yeah. So you were kind of used to them off having their own life anyways, weren't you? Yeah, I totally was. I think what I missed was just the day to day seeing them coming and going and kind of being more connected with what they were doing and just, just seeing them. Yeah, because yeah, you kind of get know. used to just having them around, don't you? And if they, even yeah. if they're just passing through, you can say, how was your day? Yeah, yeah. And, and when they move out, it's not the same on the phone? And Yeah, you miss that part. And, of course, I've got boys that are not the type that are just going to be texting you every day saying, oh, this is what I'm doing today, Mom. You know, like, <laughs> they're there, but I usually have to make the move. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so it's just a bit of a disconnect. Yeah, so you had a lot going on though. So you were busy. Yep. Right? You've got you you've got your business, you're moving, you're downsizing, you're renovating. You it's not like you were without things to do, but you what were you, like you were just feeling off. Yeah. yeah, just a real it was a real hard thing to pinpoint exactly what it was, but it's yeah. like um you know, I like a, for my husband, he's going to be retiring in a couple of years and I liken it to retirement. You know, if you don't kind of plan for it, 
you don't know what you're going to do. And I actually didn't think I was going to be affected like I was. Yeah. But I, they were older and I'm like, I mean, they were ready to be more yeah. than ready to be out yeah. on their own. Because this is no news flash to us, right? I mean, yeah. we know our kids are going to, with any luck, they're going to get older. Yeah. And, and they're going to move out. And it's really what most of us as parents want for our kids is to move on to their own lives. Yeah. Um, I know when my sister, my sister's a little bit older than me, and she she has one daughter, and they have been very, very close. And she was a single mom for a lot of my niece's life. And my niece moved out but lived in the same city, but then they moved, her and her partner moved to another city. <clears throat> and they had a son, so my sister had a grandson. And I was really blown away by how she was, how deep in grief she was for months. Like she literally was crying every day over her daughter leaving. And yet, I mean, outwardly, to people who didn't know her, she you didn't know, but, and she sure certainly didn't let her daughter know she felt that way. She was so supportive about her, whatever her daughter's choices were, but she was re she really struggled to figure out who the heck she was yeah. after that. And it was really, um, it was really eye opening for me to see that because I was like, well, that's never going to happen <laughs> to me. Uh, I can't wait for my kids to leave. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's kind of how it, it should be. But it's not always, and it can catch you off guard. I mean, you know, that, that's been our job. You know, the minute you have that baby, they're going to be leaving one day. We all know that. Yeah. Uh, I think part of the difference, too, with our generation is that we're more um, friendly with our kids. Like, we hang out with our kids. We yeah. enjoy spending time with our kids. Yeah. You know, with my parents, we had uh, the kids, we were all on our own a lot more. And our parents yes. weren't there, but they weren't, you yes. know, asking us to do stuff with them all the time. Like we actually enjoy hanging out with our kids. Yes, that's true. I and hear so that. in a way, it's kind of like your friend moving out too. And, yeah. and it is a big part of your life. I mean, this baby comes from you. Yes. And it's, you know, that's kind of, no matter what you've got going on, whether you're a stay at home mom or you're working, um, they're attached to you. And, just, and, and we're attached to them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so I see Malgerzada and Stephanie are both in the group watching. So yes. hi ladies. And um, I'm, I'm pretty sure Mal Malgerzada has kids. So you guys let us know mm -hmm. if you have kids and if they're at home or if they have left home yet and how you feel about that, how you felt about that. And I see Anita is here as well. So let us know. I know Anita has kids as well. So let us know where you're at in that whole process. And I know it's interesting for me because as the kids get older, I was just thinking about this personally. I have way more driving to do than ever right now, but I'm way less involved. My kids need me way less. And I started feeling like earlier this year, I started feeling like, wait a minute, like I, I don't need to be present with them every minute of the day so I'm feeling like there's some gaps already and they haven't left home yet right they're yeah. 19 and 14 they haven't left home yet but I'm still feeling like oh there's some gaps like this was too I'm too focused on this and I'm too I, I'm so used to doing that but they don't need that anymore yeah and I didn't think that that was going to happen and they haven't even left home yet yeah so what, um, what did you do? Like, how did you get aware of what was going on? And what did you do to change that for you? Um, I just got really focused on myself and um, personal development. I have done a lot of that over the years. And so I just started digging in um, to figure out, you know, what's next for me. Yeah. Because, because I know that it's me. And I felt like, I mean, I had things that I want to do. I didn't exactly know what it was going to be. And, you know, I was working with the coach and that's what kind of spurred me on to get into coaching mm -hmm. and then to work with women going through this, because I don't think a lot of women even talk about this as a thing. You know, they kind of make light of the empty nest syndrome um, yeah. as a thing. And, and it's, it's just not talked about a lot. So I just thought it's a, a need in an area there's a lot of us coming up into that with all those sort of end of the baby boomers. And it's just some in a place that people could use extra support. 
Yeah, yeah. And I see in the group, Anita's saying that her kids moved out and she suffered when they moved out and now it's better. Um, Liz, hi Liz, good to see you. She says her kids are home. Her daughter went to her first year of college and it was tough to get used to not having her around all the time. And I always had someone to talk to when, yeah. I, when her daughter was at home, um, uh, whenever she wanted to talk and share some news. And that's, Liz, that's really interesting because my daughter's 19 and I've just got discovered how big of a source of support she has been in my life. And like, there's just, I mean, whenever I want to share something or say something, she's there. My son, you tell him and he goes, eh. <laughs> and he keeps walking on by to wherever he's going. Um, and he's more, he comes to me more with what he wants to share. But my daughter has always been that person. So the, the challenge is, you know, not being so dependent on that one person. That's what you were saying, mm -hmm. Cora, too, is that you got really aware of yourself. Yeah. And, and what you're doing in your habits and your behavior. And that's so important. Yeah. And filling those gaps. Yeah. Right? I mean, thank goodness we live in the age of technology. You know, imagine what our parents must have gone through if they ever said anything. I don't even know if they did because they never, yeah. my parents never, ever said anything. That's yeah. like, and to me, there was just like, boot, you're out. Good. See you later. Yeah. You know, yeah. not like that, like not in yeah. a mean way, but it yeah. was more expected. But now at least we, you know, we can FaceTime and we can see our kids, even if we can't actually be with them, you know, we have these family chat groups and all that kind of stuff. So at least we do have that. We have way more connection now that we can have. Mm -hmm. um, like when my daughter went to New York, we could FaceTime and it made me yeah. think about when I traveled to Europe when I was in my early 20s. And the only way to talk to my parents was if I made a collect phone call at a payphone somewhere wherever I was. Yeah. And my dad, first thing he always did was reminded me how expensive the phone call was going to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because it was collect. Right. But you said something in, just a minute ago that was really interesting about how, you know, we don't talk about this whole thing and we kind of make light of it. And you made me kind of realize like there is a lot of pressure um, inadvertently, but there seems to be a lot of pressure in our world to be excited for when the kids move out to see this as the next evolution and like I was later I was older when I had kids so you know I'm kind of facing it at a different time than my peers who had kids and their kids left home in their 40s and there was just like this oh my I'm, I've got all this freedom now I've done my time like it was a jail sentence and there's yeah. this people talk about it in a very flip way that when the kids leave home and that's when my life's gonna start right and then there's this pressure to live up to that yeah and you made me realize like there really is this whole thing in the world about being that this is an exciting amazing adventure that you're supposed to be on then where does somebody get to say oh, i'm not excited about it i'm sad about it yeah i know that now there's facebook groups that's where some people go because they don't have anybody else that they can talk to about it. Yeah, because if, if you talk to somebody whose kids are a little bit younger than yours and are still at home, they're going to go, are you kidding? Are you crazy? Yeah. I can't wait till mine are gone. Because in the moment, we all have moments. Yeah. We can't wait for them to be gone. That's really interesting. Yeah. Like there's quite a bit of pressure, especially on women, mm -hmm. to be really happy and joyful about them leaving. Yeah, and we are. I mean, we have that part too. Yeah. But, but you don't know what the other part's going to be, how it's going to affect you. So what can you do to kind of um, prepare or to, to like prepare for some of those gaps that may come about? What can you do? Yeah. Like for somebody like me, where they're still at home, they're not gone yet. I always say that they're not going to leave home. I'm going to leave home. As soon yeah. as they're old enough, I say, <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm going to Portugal for six months. There you go. See you later. Yeah. So my plan is I'm there. I'm not, they're not leaving me. I'm going to leave. There you go. <laughs> but so what can we do? Yeah. Like, like you and I've been working together this whole year mm -hmm. because I was like, holy crap. All I've done for eight years is work and spend time with my kids. Yeah. And I recognized that I was using my kids as a crutch to not develop my own personal relationships with people my own age. So what can we do to kind of prevent some of that huge yeah. gap that's going to happen? And that is the thing is, is kind of just being aware of it ahead of time and to start thinking about things. What do you want to do? 
What are things maybe that you wanted to do before kids that you've never done that you put on hold? Mm -hmm. What are, um, you know, hobbies, different interests. Some of the things I like to do when my kids were little, I don't like doing anymore. So I'm in that process too of what are my new hobbies? But, you know, starting to be aware of that and to try new things and we have to get out because mm -hmm. it's super easy to stay home and start a Netflix binge. Hell yeah. Right? And yeah. it's like, what do you want? What do you want people to say about you when you're not here? Mm -hmm. That you, you know, do mm -hmm. you have something you want to accomplish? Do you, and it doesn't always have to be something big, like, you know, you want to be a, a motivational speaker or something like that. Like some people will want that, but some people's idea might be like a retirement yeah. or they want to travel more or, but just, you know, start looking at things that you want to do so that you are already on that road, especially if you can do it before your kids leave home. Mm -hmm. Because like you say, you've already got gaps and for you, you could easily fill them with work, but you I have to just work, 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 which is, you know, depending where you are, you know, that might be the time though. Like for you, you've got a lot of growing going on, which is awesome. Yeah. But just be aware that you want to have that socialness too, because when the kids are gone and if you're getting like support from your daughter um, or like we do, like hanging out with their kids, I used to go out for coffee with the kids or whatever in, in between their busyness. Um, how, what do you want to fill that space with? Yeah. Well, and I've always said that, you know, you should never expect one person to fill like yeah. one person can't be everything you need. Yeah. Even if you're married, you still have exactly. to have other stuff going on. Exactly. Exactly. That's part of the balance. Yeah. Um, so Anita said, this is interesting. We were talking about, was it hard for our parents? And Anita said it was hard for her parents. She was an only child. And at 19, she moved to Poland, which was a thousand kilometers away from where her parents were. I bet that was very hard, especially as an old only child. And then later she moved to Canada, which is even farther away. So yeah, I bet you that would be really hard. Yeah. 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 So, um, and so that's one of the tips that I do is talking to people about hobbies, interests, or, you know, finding new friends. That's another big one. Yeah. A lot of people whose kids were in sports, you know, that's who their friends were. And when the sports end, those people don't stay friends anymore. That was yeah. what they had in common. They're friends by association. Yeah. Not by choice. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And, and you see that even at this, if there's no sports, even at the school with, mm -hmm. you know, parents of elementary school kids, your friend group becomes the friends of your kids. Yeah. They really do yeah. take over our lives, those little monsters. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you do get friends out of there, but if you don't start thinking about that and start getting out, I mean, now we've got places like Meetup where you can go on and find different kinds of groups with different kinds of hobbies you yeah. want to get into photography or dancing or you know, anything you want, anything you can think of. And, you know, I, I'm thinking, reflecting to our work together when we first started in January and you started asking me, um, you know, what kind of things do you like to do? And my answer was, I, I don't know. All I've done is work yeah. and hang yeah. out with the kids. So I've done things the kids wanted to do. It's not been about me. I don't know. And it took me a while to be able to come up with ideas of what I wanted to do. And then once I had the ideas, then it became, oh, I have to go do this by myself now or with a friend and leaving the kids at home and easier to just go, no, I don't feel like doing that. I'm just going to hang out with the kids tonight. And so there's been these hurdles that I didn't expect were going to be there. I didn't think for a minute these things were going to even be around. And you helped me identify the hurdles, but then you were there to support me in getting over the hurdles and reminding me what my goal was at the end of the day. Cause you know what? I don't want to sit and cry for six months when my kids leave home. Yeah. I, I don't want that. I don't want that energy. I don't want to feel that way. I want to be excited for their adventure. And I never in a million years want to ever say to anything to them that makes them go, Oh wow. Like I feel bad leaving mom and yeah. home alone. Yeah, you kind of want to be showing them that you have the life too, right? Yeah. And that you're going to continue yeah. getting so excited. For the people watching, what kind of uh, hobbies have you neglected or that you wanted when your kids were at home that you might pick up and do that you can well, do now? Yeah, I did a lot of craft stuff when my kids were little that I was interested in. But as I got older and I needed glasses, some of them weren't as much fun anymore. So I, 
you know, kind of let those go. But I'm wanting to do more stuff outdoorsy, you know, yeah. because we're on the computer so much now and really need a break from all our technology. So getting more into hiking where I live, I'm like a two minute walk. If I walk really slow to get into the river and go kayaking, um, my husband and I want to start getting into swing dancing again. We haven't been doing that for a while. So mm -hmm. that's something that we want to do together because we're trying to find some things for us to do together as well. Awesome. And then we just started working out in our little community because we live in an RV community in a little house. It's not officially a tiny house. We're just over a tiny house. But we just um, put together a new gym so we can start working out again. So we want to be live a long, healthy life too because yeah. – yeah. Self-care is the other part the mom's kind of put on the back burner, right? You're raising your kids and you don't always look after yourself. And it's like that um, thing on the plane, right? You got to put your oxygen mask on so that you can help the other people. So mm -hmm. if you're not looking after yourself, how are you going to look after everybody else? But it's easy to put yourself on the back burner when you're raising your kids. Yeah. So we want to live a long, healthy life. Maybe they're going to have grandkids and we want to be able to enjoy them. Because I think that's when we get to do the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. No responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar them up and send them home. Yeah. Um, so how do you work with people? What, what do you, how do you work with people? I'm not sure. What do you mean by that? Well, Give me a little more. Like I know you and I work together. So mm -hmm. tell people that are watching, um, you know, you work with people who are already are in the empty nest or preparing for the empty nest, one-on-one -on -one coaching groups. That sort of yeah. thing. How, how can you help people in this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mostly doing working one-on-one -on -one and we just do it via phone call. So it can be anywhere in the world. Um, we you generally start with a tool that I use called the wheel of life. Because most people are trying to find that life work balance and they think there's just those two pieces to the puzzle, but there's actually about eight pieces in the puzzle. So we can kind of go through each of the areas and find out how satisfied you are in those areas. And the ones that you're not as satisfied, we can dig into what's going on and how to improve those areas and get that balance. It's never gonna be a perfect circle. Uh, life is dynamic and it's always moving around, mm -hmm. but that's a place to start. Yeah, very cool. And then, um, so you work together one-on-one -on -one with sessions, men? Yeah. Men don't really suffer from this much, do they? Um, there are some. Yeah. But I resonate with women more, so I generally work with women more mm -hmm. just because that's the slant that I know. But I know there are some men. Yeah, wow. But I think with men, more of their stuff comes up with retirement because yes. generally they are the breadwinners. And like I, my husband and I have talked about this a lot, and I think we're kind of preparing him for it because he works a lot mm. and that's been his identity for uh, mm -hmm. six, um, almost 60 years. Mm -hmm. And to not have that part is going to be a big change. And I, I liken it to that, even though our time as a mom is a little bit shorter than a working life. Mm -hmm. It's a similar mindset, I believe. Mm -hmm. So if you had one tip for everybody today, that you would leave them with, what would that be? And I want you, then I want you to, I got one other thing. So this is not the end the word, just cause I yeah. said you're going to leave it with yeah. but one tip that you wanted to give somebody about, you know, facing this or in the middle of it, or even if it's behind you, I would say if you're not an empty nester already to start looking at how you want your life to be as an empty nester, mm -hmm. start planning what you want. Are you going to be traveling hobbies, activities, making new friends, start doing that now while you still have those kids at home and you have that yeah. extra support. Yeah. And if you're already an empty nester and everything's going good, that's great. If not, take a look at it and figure out what could be different. Mm -hmm. um, and manage expectations, I would say, with your kids is a big one too. Um, a lot of women, you know, they get upset if the kids aren't texting them enough or calling enough and whatnot. Um, be flexible in what you expect to get from your kids and be grateful for the time that they do give you. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I know with my kids, they're not that far away, but they're super busy. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and I respect that. And I try and be a little more flexible in the things that we do yeah. to try and work around them a little bit so that we yeah. can have good times and not get upset because they can't be here maybe on Father's Day, but maybe we can have Father's Day on Tuesday because that works for all of yeah. us. 
Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're building their own lives and yeah. we're kind of used to our kids being here at what we decide. Yeah. Us being in control of everything. And for me, I think that's a, a challenge because I'm used to being in control of everything. I decide, have mm -hmm. decided everything for years. So now they get to decide it's going to be kind of crazy. Yeah. And I think that's for me too, is a part of probably my issue was like the control is just the knowing where everyone was and kind of having some say in that. And then now having nothing and yeah. knowing nothing, but sometimes knowing nothing's a good thing too. I don't think I necessarily want to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I remember um, when I was in Europe, traveling in Europe with a friend and we had a train pass and we had pa our backpacks and we we're just traveling and uh, I would write letters to my family and I should never have told them half the stuff that I told them. <laughs> when I think about it now, I'm like, oh, my poor mom. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I thought it was fun. And so I was sharing that I was having all this fun. In the meantime, she's going, you're getting arrested in Monaco? What are you talking about? <laughs> this is not fun. Yeah, so, it yeah, probably okay. would have been better to tell her after you got back. <sighs> Right. She saw that while you're there. there. Yeah. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, it's good that I felt like I could tell her that stuff. So mm -hmm. you've got um, a freebie that you're going to offer everybody. Want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So because when when I was at Empty Nesters, I actually didn't even. I don't think there were even groups on Facebook yet. I didn't even think of looking around actually because it took me a while to figure out what it was but I didn't really have any resource. So I created um, a little tip book. It's five do's and five don'ts for empty nesters, just to give you a jumping off place to, you know, get some ideas of things you might want to be looking for to do or not to do. Right. Yeah. So, and this is okay if you're before the empty nest too, this yeah. will help you prepare a little bit, right? For sure. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to put the link for that in the Facebook group. Um, so hang on. Yeah, I have read some books from uh, Empty Nesters, and there are a couple, a couple good ones out there, but not a ton. A lot of them are for really grieving people. Some people really take it really hard, too. Well, like my sister. Yeah, yeah. So you are in uh, a new, kind of a new niche, and you're doing some groundbreaking stuff here and supporting people in this, and I really applaud you in that because there is so much pressure for this to be the most exciting time of, of the world in the world for you and may not be for everybody. And it's okay yeah. if you're not feeling that way yeah. um, and you can get support and turn it into something that's more positive. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are some positives with not having kids here, right? The mess is the same when you leave as when you, when you get back home. <laughs> All the foods in the fridge the, when you get home. Way less laundry. Yeah. <laughs> Way less grocery shopping, way less cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some bonuses there. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for being here with me and sharing this stuff. I just love hearing about what you're doing. I think it's so important. And, uh, you know, there's so many people out there that are facing this that they need some support. So thank you for being here with me. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah. So if you guys have any other questions, post them in the chat and Cora is always an active member in this group, but she'll answer anything. If you want to reach out to her, um, please do. I'm sure she'd be happy to hear from you if you want to send her a message um, and make sure you do go and claim her five do's and five don'ts handout because it'll be really helpful for you. And if you'd like to be a guest expert with me here in the Badass Facebook Marketing Club, I would encourage you to reach out to me or leave a comment and I will reach out to you. This is a new um, thing that I've been offering to people in the group. So this is your opportunity to come on one-on-one -on -one with me, have an interview, have a conversation, share what you do, share you know, how you help people talk about your business, make an offer at the end of a freebie or a paid program if you want, and an opportunity to get in front of, you know, 3,000 entrepreneurs from all over the world in ways that other members don't have that opportunity. So if you're interested in having a guest expert spot, I have five spots available left for the year. Um, and so you want to reach out to me or leave a comment here and I'll reach out to you so that we can highlight you and make you a guest expert. So the 
interview goes live here in the group, but then my team and I repurpose this and it goes live on my Facebook page to my 33,000 fans on my Facebook page. And it also gets uploaded into my YouTube channel. So your reach is going to be huge um, from investing in this opportunity. So let me know if you're interested and I will hook you up for that. Thank you so much, Cora. I really appreciate you being here. Yeah, it's great. All right. Bye, everyone.